in today's lesson we will be talking about moles and we will try to convert mass to moles and moles back to mass these are some simple conversions that we will do using dimensional analysis moles can be related to three terms mass a number and a volume if it's connected to a mass the mass of one mole is called the molar mass and the unit is grams per mole moles are also related to a number just like a dozen is 12 a mole is equal to an avogadro's number or which is 6.022 into 10 to the power of 23. finally moles are connected to a volume it's called molar volume and it's a volume of one mole of any gas at stp conditions the value is 22.414 liters moles can be represented with the letter n or lowercase n first we will determine the molar mass of a substance and this is how you can do that now we will determine the molar mass of water and in order to determine the molar mass of water we will need the relative atomic mass or atomic weights of elements which can be obtained from the periodic table hydrogen the relative atomic mass is 1.01 .01. And the atomic number is 1. Oxygen, the atomic number is 8. And the relative atomic mass is 16.00. So we're going to use these numbers to calculate what we call the mass of one mole or molar mass. So we have identified the relative atomic masses of hydrogen and oxygen. In water, there are two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. Molar mass is equal to sum of the relative atomic masses of the different elements in the molecule. So here there are two hydrogens. So we will multiply the relative atomic mass of hydrogen by 2 and the relative atomic mass of oxygen by 1. So the molar mass is equal to 2 times 1.01 .01 plus 1 times 16.00 which is equal to 18.02 grams per mole the unit of molar mass is grams per mole and that is also a conversion unit for every mole of a substance the mass expressed in grams is what we're going to use as a conversion unit next let's determine the molar mass of glucose glucose is C6H12O6 there are six carbon atoms 12 hydrogens and six oxygens the relative atomic masses can be obtained from the periodic table hydrogen is 1.01 .01, oxygen is 16 and carbon is 12.01 we will determine the molar mass of glucose hydrogen is 1.01 .01, oxygen is 16 and carbon is 12.01 in glucose there are six carbon atoms 12 hydrogen atoms and six oxygen atoms so we can write it as six times c plus 12 times h plus 6 times o now substitute the the symbols with the relative atomic masses of each of these elements for carbon is 6 times 12.01 plus 12.101 for hydrogen and 6.6 6 into 16 for oxygen when you total it up it gives you 180.180 .180 units or atomic mass units or grams that's the molar mass of glucose or the mass of one mole of glucose is equals to 180.18 grams next we will determine the molar mass of ammonium carbonate the elements present are hydrogen oxygen carbon and nitrogen so we will determine the molar mass of ammonium carbonate There are eight hydrogens, two nitrogens, three oxygens, and one carbon. So the molar mass will be equal to eight times the relative atomic mass of hydrogen plus two times the relative atomic mass of nitrogen plus three times the relative atomic mass of oxygen plus one times the relative atomic mass of carbon, which will turn out to be eight into 1.01 .01 plus two into 14.01 plus three into 16 plus. 1 into 12.01 it sums up to give you 96.11 grams per mole 
for one mole of ammonium carbonate or in one mole of ammonium carbonate the, the mass will be 96.11 grams the unit is grams per mole so that's how you can determine the molar mass of any compound molar masses of elements would be the relative atomic masses which can be directly obtained from the periodic table next we will convert grams to moles we will be using dimensional analysis for converting grams to moles and moles back to grams first we will convert 50 grams of water to moles so the unit for the mass or for the quantity given is grams we want to express it as moles or how many moles are present in 50 grams so this is what we can do every time you want to convert a numerical value from a particular unit to a different unit we need a conversion unit so in this case the conversion unit is grams per mole because the relationship between moles and grams comes from the molar mass the molar mass is the mass of one mole so that's the conversion unit for every molecule there will be a specific mass which is its molar mass and we can use this mass to determine to convert the quantities back to moles or moles back to grams so the first thing to do would be to determine the molar mass of water which we have already done which is 18.02 grams per mole we know that the unit of molar mass as we had already seen is grams per mole this is also the conversion unit so mass of water is a quantity that is given to us if you multiply it by the conversion unit and you can write the conversion unit such that it cancels the unit of the quantity that we have so either you can have the grams in the numerator or the moles in the denominator or vice versa or we can have the grams in the denominator and moles in the numerator if it is a conversion unit okay so that's what we're doing so we're going to multiply the quantity that is given to us with a conversion unit so you will be expected to identify the conversion unit that's very important in this case it is grams per mole or moles per gram so let's actually substitute the numbers we have 50 grams of water the unit of the quantity given to us is grams we do not want the unit to be grams we want it to be moles so we are going to multiply it by a conversion unit such that the grams unit get cancelled out so when you multiply it by the conversion unit in the denominator of the conversion unit we need to have the unit grams so when we are relating one mole with a molar mass we take the molar mass and put it in the denominator which makes it 18.02 grams of h2 in the numerator you have one mole now if you cancel the terms the units grams and grams what remains would be mole so the final answer will represent the moles of water in 50 grams so that's how you convert grams to moles so for every conversion there is a conversion unit and you have to use it appropriately such that the terms cancel out and the resulting value should be representing the unit that you require in this case it's moles and we have moles for the answer now let's convert 70 grams of glucose to moles in order to solve this problem we need a conversion unit the conversion unit is the mass of one mole of glucose we have already determined that and we will use it the unit of molar mass is grams per mole which we will use as a conversion unit so mass of glucose times the conversion unit should give you moles so the conversion unit should be written such that when you cancel out the units of the quantity with the conversion unit the final unit should represent mole so you should write the conversion unit in such a way so we have 70 grams of glucose times one mole in the numerator divided by 180.18 grams of glucose so in the denominator you have grams so you can cancel out the grams in the conversion unit with the unit of the quantity that is given to us grams of glucose grams of glucose get cancelled out which means the final unit will be moles because that's the only unit remaining in 
this calculation. That's 0 0.3885 moles of glucose will be obtained from 70 grams of glucose. Now we will convert 120 grams of ammonium carbonate to moles. In order to solve the problem, what we need is a conversion unit. And the conversion unit has to come from the molar mass of ammonium carbonate. The unit of molar mass is grams per mole. So we can convert grams to moles or moles to grams with this conversion unit. So first we will write the quantity that is given to us. In this case, mass of ammonium carbonate times the conversion unit. We will write, we will write it such that the final unit will be moles. 120 grams of ammonium carbonate times the conversion unit is one mole of ammonium carbonate is equals to 96.11 grams. So in the denominator you have grams, in the numerator you have moles and now we can cancel out the grams of ammonium carbonate from the quantity that is given to us to the conversion unit. So finally the and in this case, it will be 1.248 moles of ammonium carbonate will be present in 120 grams. So that's how you can convert grams to moles using dimensional analysis. Now let's convert moles to grams. Convert 0 0.85 moles of water to grams of water. In order to solve this problem, what we need is a conversion unit again. The conversion unit again is the molar mass. The unit of molar mass is grams per mole. So moles of water is the quantity that's given to us multiplied by the conversion unit such that the final result should have a unit of grams. So the quantity given to us is 0 0.85 moles of water. And you're going to multiply it by the conversion unit and you write the conversion unit such that the denominator will have moles in it. Or we can write 18.02 grams in the numerator divided by one mole of water. So we can cancel out the common terms. We can cancel out the units of moles on the left and the right. Moles of water from the quantity moles of water from the conversion unit which leaves us with the unit of grams so the final answer would be 0.85 moles of water would contain 15.317 grams of water so we can convert moles to grams or grams to moles now let's convert 1.5 moles of glucose to grams of glucose in order to solve this problem we will need a conversion unit. The conversion unit is the molar mass of glucose. The unit of molar mass is grams per mole. So we take the quantity of substance given to us, multiply it by a conversion unit, which will give us the unit grams. So we have to arrange the conversion unit such that when you cancel out the terms, the final product should have a unit of grams. So the quantity given to us is 1.5 moles of glucose multiplied by the molar mass of glucose. And in the denominator of the conversion unit, we will have one mole of glucose. In the numerator, you have the molar mass, which is 180.18 grams. We cancel out the units of 1.5 moles of glucose divided by one mole of glucose in the conversion unit. The only unit remaining is grams. So your final answer will be 270.27 grams of glucose will be present in 1.5 moles of glucose. So that's how you can convert mass to moles and moles to mass. That's it for now.